Okay, Jordan, we're back. And uh, for all the people who were highly puzzled by a man of your obvious intellect and stature and scholarship, why, why would you be talking about something called astrology? Well, <clears throat> first of all, let me say that... Um the reason why I haven't been doing radio, uh, you know, for some time now, is I am under attack 24-7. I'm being attacked by uh, these people that's on my website, uh, on, on the, on the uh, homepage of my website. There's a red box there that's telling you that I'm having problems in court. Uh, click on that box and go and read the whole page. Read it. Read what the courts are saying, what the lawyers are saying. I've been under attack. I cannot do anything that I'm not, uh, you know, attacked by these people. I can't do any radio because they they call the radio station. They call the 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 host of the show and threaten to sue them if I go on. I've been asked to speak at conferences, and these dolezals find out that I might be speaking at a conference, they will go and call the conference and email them and, and, and say they're going to sue the conference for having me on because I can't speak in public because they own my name, they own my money, they own my website, they own my product, they own everything. They own me. They own everything. And so I can't do anything. I'm under attack continually. I don't have the finances to protect myself or to defend myself. I don't have anything. And therefore, it is very difficult for me to, and it's very, very difficult to be clever and resourceful and do radio and entertain audiences with knowledge and understanding when you live <clears throat> under the gun of being, uh, of being sued, threatened continually. It's just very difficult for me to uh, to do anything anymore until I get out from under these <laughs> who have stolen my money, my website, my products, and now are in, and they also try to steal my name so that I become persona non grata. I don't exist, and they take my name, my money, and everything I've ever worked for, and leave me for dead. So that's why I haven't been able to do radio, and that's why it's very, very, very difficult to even stay alive, that I'm under attack continually. So hopefully there will be some justice left in this world, and these people will go to because that's where they belong. They're They've stolen everything from me, and all you have to do is look at the court records, and if you have a legal mind of any kind, go read what the attorneys are saying. These people are and they belong in So I just want people to understand why it is I haven't been doing radio. A lot of people email me and say, well, where, where are the shows? Well, it's very difficult to do the shows. I don't have the money to pay the station to, uh, you know, to uh, do these shows. It costs money to, uh, you know, for the station to, uh, to record the shows for me and to put it out. I don't have anything. I have nothing. Zero, nothing. And when you have zero, nothing, uh, it's very difficult to, uh, you know, to defend yourself in court. So that's the name of that tune. That's why I've, you know, I come on every now and then the best I can until I can get past this legal uh, destructiveness that these people have done to me in almost for five years now. It's going on five years that these people have stolen everything from me and destroyed my name, my career, everything I've ever worked for. These people need to be dealt with by the law. So that's, I just want everyone to understand what the situation that I've had to live with for five years. So, um, but I feel so very, very strongly. Uh, and I've said this before, I think it, I think it bears witness again to say it again. Suppose you, by chance, one day happen to find something of extremely extraordinary value. 
some sort of a treasure that was hidden and you just inadvertently by chance happen to be in the right place at the right time and stumble upon something which was hidden. Uh, now, if you go out and you, first of all, you don't want to go out and tell everybody what you found. You got to think about it first. What's the smart thing to do? If you found, say, uh, millions of dollars in diamonds or millions and millions of dollars in precious uh, coins or whatever that somebody had stashed away, they thought they were hidden for good, and you just happened by chance to stumble upon it and found it, what would you do? Well, first of all, I would think the first problem you're going to have is that people are going, if whoever you're going to tell is going to say to you, if it sounds too good to be true, it's probably not. It probably is too good to be true. So you're probably just uh, you know babbling away about something that's that's in fact not true at all. Um, so how are you going to uh, how are you going to convince the world of the value and the worth and the value of the thing that you have found when most people are going to tell you that nah, it's probably a bunch of bull, you know. It, he just, he just uh, thinks he's found something. It's like fool's gold. You thought you found gold. No, it's just iron pyrite. It's not really what you think it is. Well, how do you convince the world that is uh, so turned off on the idea that there could be something extremely valuable that's been hidden? Uh, how do you, what would you say? How would you present your find to the world to get someone of authority to look at what you found? Uh, you know, and you you might think that uh, sounds silly, but it's no. It's very very. It's a very legitimate problem. If you found something that you're not supposed to know exists, and it's of extreme value, how would you convince people that you really do have something that's uh, that's pretty hard to believe? You know that well, it's too good to be to be true. No, this this is pretty good, but it is true. So that's my question. How would you uh, adequately explain the value of the thing you have found to a people who will think that you're full of bull? That's been my problem for many years. Because while on the face of it, I have heard so many times about astrology being, uh, you know, it's not a science. Well, I mean, let's look at science. You want to talk about science? Every five years, science totally changes. I mean, everything we knew and nailed down, and there was no doubt about it uh, 10 years ago, yeah, it's all gone. It's all totally gone. We got new instruments. We got better telescopes, microscopes. We got better equipment now. And now we know that everything that we knew 10 years ago is not true. The whole thing is, is ludicrous on the face of it. So now you got to go back and start it, start looking at the, the new facts about the things you've been looking at because you thought you had the whole truth. Well, my God, you can go back, you know, let's go back 100 years and, and see what the best of the best of the best, the top scientists of the world in, in 1914, what they were saying as opposed to what we now know. Well, it's totally different. And, uh, and so... I'm not impressed when I hear that someone who has a PhD or a doctorate and they say, oh, it's a bunch of bull, that what, you know, what this guy is talking about is irrelevant. Uh, it's a pseudo science and all that kind of stuff. No, you better look at, you better look at the science establishment itself and realize that the people at the top in the science world, in the world of science, uh, are getting money from the federal government. They're getting money. They make a living off of uh, the universities uh, giving them uh, salaries. So uh, scientists, uh, I've talked to uh, to uh, uh, archaeologists who will tell you uh, that if if uh, if an, uh, if you find something of extreme value in archaeology, if a if a scientist or an archaeologist was not working for a university 
was not working for a federal agency, was not working for some kind of a, a very important governmental institution. Uh, and if he's not working for any of those uh, any of those institutions and he finds something of extraordinary value, nobody is going to listen. Nobody. Nobody wants to hear it. And so and, and if someone uh, is, is finds something, like I said, not only nobody's going to hear it, but the rest of the uh, of so so called science world is going to put it down and say it's a bunch of bull. Why? It's because they, who are working for these institutions and colleges and universities, who are being paid large salaries to find things in archaeology, they didn't find it. You found it. Some poor guy out there in the middle of nowhere, out with his family vacationing, and happened to dig up something out in the middle of nowhere and found something of extraordinary value, but uh, he's not a scientist. He's not uh, connected to any university, so he's obviously out of his mind, so we don't even look at it. So that's so much for science. And anybody, anyone who knows anything about what science, the science community is all about, it's just a religion. Science is a religion. It's got its holy men. They have their holy, holy orders. They have their, like all, like all religions, they are filled with money and political power. So science is not really science. There's only a handful of people I consider to be, in fact, scientists. And those people you will never hear from. They are extraordinarily brilliant people who have, a, a, you know, who have uncovered extraordinarily and brilliant uh, things about the world we live in. But you're never going to hear about them because they're not connected to any university and getting large salaries from some grant from the federal government. Uh, and so the, the universities can't claim that, see, our guy found this. Or the government can say, yep, see, our government scientists, they found this because uh, we're so important. No, some, some guy at night with a telescope in his backyard, he finds a planet that you didn't even know existed. Well, nobody's going to talk about it. It's not important. We just forget it and move on. Go watch basketball and just forget it. So we have nothing but corruption, lies, deception, stupidity, ignorance, self-centered, egotistical, moronic crap going on, calling it science. We call it religion. We call it commerce. So all of our institutions that we humans have dreamt up, put into place, are usually dreamt up and put into place by very powerful moneyed interests. Very powerful interest who owns now, not not in the beginning, but who now own the universities, who now own the banks, who own uh, the institutions of higher learning. And these universities are getting money from the government. The scientists are getting money from the university. So there's a system in place. And if you don't belong to the system, like George Carlin says, it's a big club and you ain't in it so if you find something of really extraordinary value and you're not in the big club then you don't exist you're not important and if you and if the government can use it in wartime if the government can use it as a weapon or if the government can use it in any way they will get it but it'll be very quiet no one will ever know <clears throat> but the government will come in and take what you have discovered, and most likely you will have, uh, uh, it will be a terrible event, but you will die of cancer. You will die of some terrible disease or something within about two weeks, and what you discovered will never, ever, ever be known to the public ever again. So it's very difficult if you have something of real importance that you have discovered uh, to try and, and give it to your fellow man. On the one hand, you're going to be marginalized and made to look like a fool because you're nobody. Where well, how would you know anything? Or that you do have something important and the government wants it, and uh, but they don't want anyone knowing that they have it. They don't want you talking about it, so they will get it from you. 
and then you will conveniently die of, uh, of suicide by uh, getting shot in the back of the head four times you committed suicide. So I know that there is a the problem exists in this world that if you have something of real value, how are you really going to get it out to the public so that the public can benefit from it? And uh, how are you going to be able to get past all of the uh, so-called important people who didn't find what you found? And they're going to make you look like a fool and so that you'll just shut up. So that's the problem that I've come across in religion and all the different subjects I've been talking about. I get nothing but uh, condemnation from uh, from. Uh, religions from people who consider themselves to be authorities on everything. I always say I'm not an authority on anything. I'm just an ordinary man pursuing extraordinary knowledge. I'm not stupid. I'm not a PhD. I don't have any of those letters about, uh, in front of my name or after my name. I don't. I don't claim to be a world's foremost authority. I'm just an ordinary human, but. I'm not stupid. When I find something that I know is of extraordinary significance and importance, my first thought is to share it with my friends and with, and with the people who want to know. I think that's a normal human quality, that if you really care about your friends and care about your family and ultimately from that care about your community and ultimately care about your country, if you really care and you find something of extreme value, you want to share it. I mean, I grew up hearing that, you know, if you're going to be going somewhere on vacation or, or, or going to some amusement park or something, you want to go with friends to share the, the, the experience with good friends. You want to share with other people. And so that's the way I feel. I just want to share with other people something that I have found that I know, I don't suspect, think, or wish, but that I know is of extraordinary value. Why? Because I have watched it over a period of time. I have experienced it over and over and over again. And every time I am amazed at how important the thing that I have found is. <clears throat> now I have to try and talk to people who, you know, who have no idea who I am and what I'm doing and what I'm talking about and the importance of it. So how do you tell people when you found something important? And, uh, and you know, so and especially if, you, if you're a doctor and you've been working on, and this is, I think, is a very good analogy. If you've been working on some kind of a disease, some sort of a, of a rare but but deadly disease, and you found the cure. Uh, first of all, you know, if a doctor who was highly highly uh, uh, placed uh, doctor in this country goes on a vacation to say uh, uh, some foreign country to some uh, country in the South Seas or whatever, and he sees that the people there are all dying of a disease. Uh, and being a doctor, highly intelligent, well, uh, well uh, placed doctor, when he sees the symptoms of the people, he knows exactly what the problem is. But these people are living in a jungle. They're living in a you know in a very uh, um, rare existence in a jungle setting. They don't have the background and the the knowledge that that doctor does. But then on the other hand, he's in a place where people are not going to listen to him. He's not from that area. He's not, you know, they don't know who he is. They don't know about his credentials. And so he's trying to explain to the heads of the tribe what these people are dying from. It's very obvious to him. All they need to do is get a shot with this, this, or that. Or take this pill, and uh, it's, it's, you know, it's a disease that he understands well. But they don't understand it, and they're not going to listen to him anyway. They don't know who he is, and they couldn't care less. So how does he explain to these people who are dying of a disease that he has the answer for them? Because he's not one of them, 
He doesn't look like them. He doesn't talk like them. He has a difference in, in the way he his language is not understood by them. Uh, so how does he save the people? How does he do something to help these people who are dying? Well, that's the same problem I'm talking about before. I have found something that I know. Again, I don't think or suspect I know is of profound significance. But uh, how do you how do you tell other people? How do you convince other people of what you have found, and have them at least try it to see if I found something or didn't? So that's the way I feel about the subject of astral theology. It's extraordinarily important stuff that uh, so many people have never heard of before. Now I, I also uh, have have many years ago made a discovery uh, that someone uh, showed me that there is a world of difference, which I didn't know. But they showed me that there was a world of difference between astrology and, uh, and I don't know exactly what to call it, but it's like astrology in that uh, it's an ability to read uh, in the stars, in the constellations, in the heavens, the ancient peoples. I mean, my God, how many how many uh, videos and movies have we watched on Discovery Channel, on History Channel, on all the networks about the Aztecs, the Mayas, and the Incas, and all the ancient wisdom and knowledge that the Egyptians and the Hindus and and all the Babylonians and the Sumerians and all the ancient cultures of the world, they were brilliant on building pyramids and they knew about this, they knew about that, uh, and all of this wonderful, strange, uh, extraordinary knowledge that was known by these ancient and prehistoric cultures. And we think, my God, how did these Egyptians build this? And how did they build the pyramids? And, where did these people get this? I, you know, all the knowledge that they had. <clears throat> well, so I boil it all down to the fact that uh, astrology has become a very, uh, uh, you know, it's something to be put down in public. It's, it's nonsense. The reason why you need to know why astrology has such a bad name. The most important reason, and there's more than one reason, but the most important reason is that for a thousand years, the Catholic Church in the Vatican has dominated, well, 2,000 years, they, they, Christianity has dominated Europe. <clears throat> and since uh, about the fourth century, the Vatican has dominated Christianity, and Christianity has dominated Europe, and Europe has dominated the world. So the people in power over this incredible system of religio, political, governmental, religious system that has dominated the earth for 2,000 years, these are very powerful people. You're talking about the papacy. We're talking about the pope, kings and rulers and princes of, of European nations and European countries. And those countries have dominated Europe and those and Europe has dominated the world. So there has been a concerted effort, obviously, by powerful people in very high places of power in Europe and unfortunately in America also, who are not interested in letting you know anything of any importance. You know, I've always said that it really important information is on a need to know basis. And you don't need to know. Now, again, George Kerlin, it's a big club and you ain't in it. So therefore, whatever is really important, you will never know. No one's going to tell you anything. And if they do tell you, they're going to get hurt. So you don't tell, you know, you don't tell the people of the street. You don't tell the common man what you're doing. If you're a scientist working at NASA, if you're a physicist working for the government and you're doing something with the government, nobody is supposed to know, it's not going to be out on radio. It's not going to be on television. The really important stuff you are not going to be privy to hear, period. 
And the problem is in America, if somebody does know something and trying to tell you in the public, trying to wake you up, that can be very dangerous, very dangerous to talk about things that the public is not supposed to know about. So again, I'm just, I'm just going around the whole story and bringing it together in one place that if you have something important of real and legitimate importance, it's going to be very difficult to get it out into the public and have people believe and understand it and see it and take advantage of it. So that's the way I feel about something that I came across a long time ago that, um, I, as I was, was saying, that I had someone explain to me that there was a world of difference, night and day, world of difference between astrology, which has a bad name because the church doesn't want you to know that the whole of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam is based on astrology. Islam, Judaism, and Christianity are astrological religions based on astrology. Read it. You don't have to be a, a, an astronaut. You don't have to be a brain surgeon. Go and read where these religions have come from. And you will see that all three are based on astrology. So I'm saying that astrology itself is a profoundly interesting and important subject. <clears throat> but there's a world of difference between common, what we call uh, astrology, and, and, a, and a legitimate study of how the constellations, the stars, the planets affect us on the earth. And the man who was most famous for getting the closest to that hidden truth was a man named uh, Nostradamus. Nostradamus, over 500 years ago, lived over 500 years ago, and yet even today, 500 years later, his name is still respected. There's still a mystique and a mystical importance to the name Nostradamus. Why? Because he did so many, he, he had so many uh, prophecies that he prophesied that came to, came to pass exactly the way he said they would. So, you know, you can complain all you want and say that astrology is a bunch of bull. That's what the, uh, the paid lackeys who have their, quote, degrees from a university who, uh, who uh, are not interested in you knowing anything they will tell you like adults tell children, go out and play, go out and play ball. The adults want to talk in private, so you go out and play a ball, uh, play ball and get out of our way. We important adults, we want to talk about something, we don't want you to hear it. So go play ball. Well, I learned a long time ago, I'm not interested in playing ball. I'm not a team player. I always wanted to know, what are you adults talking about while we're out playing ball? I'm not stupid. And so I've learned now that uh, the people who are in power do not want you to know that there are certain things that they have known for a long time, and they're not telling you. And for, and for this particular show, I am saying that astrology itself is the basis for the three major world religions. As I said before, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam are based on astrology, period, end of sentence. And all one needs to do is go to a library and spend a year reading all about the beginnings of all three major religions, where they came from, what they taught, a thousand years ago, what they taught 500 years ago, where these concepts and ideas came from, and then you will finally see what I, I saw a long time ago. Astrology is the basis for the symbols of world government, national coats of arms, halotry, flags, corporate coats of arms. The whole world is guided and directed by astrological symbols, words, and terms. I mean, we have, you know, our cars have astrological names. Uh, it's just an extraordinary how much astrology has infected and, uh, and, imp and, uh, and um, guided the destiny of the human race on the earth. But government symbols, seals, as I said, national coats of arms, halotry, flags, 
badges, names of uh, names of universities, names of cities, names of cars, names of countries. So, but there is a difference between regular astrology, which is for sure not uh, 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 not as accurate as it could be, but very interesting, very close. Regular astrology is very interesting because it does have many things that that people who are educated. Unfortunately, not too many of those, but people who are educated do see that astrology does have some interesting uh, aspects to it, that it does uh, answer a lot of questions about a personality, about a person's personality, uh, about their life, what happened to them. Uh, but, again, there's a world of difference between regular astrology, which is very interesting, and what Nostradamus did which was a mind blower. For some reason, somehow, and I don't know, and I don't think anybody else does, Nostradamus was able to figure out something that we could loosely call astrology. But it's not exactly astrology. It's something like it, but it's far, far more accurate and far more, uh, you know, it's far more important. And so I came into uh, face to face with this reality of what Nostradamus did and how he did it. And uh, and the more I began to see the people who knew about this subject, the people who were the experts on this subject, uh, when I began to listen to them over the years as they began to explain, well, according to Nostradamus, here is what is going to happen to the world, and here's what's going to happen to this uh, institution or to this person, uh, according to their birthday, according to what Nostradamus would say, not astrology, but according to the way Nostradamus did things, here's what that means, here's what that means, and every time it's extremely accurate. And so I became uh, infatuated with the idea that Nostradamus knew something that other people didn't. And, and I have always been interested in that, the world of the occult. The word occult simply means hidden. And the way in which Nostradamus was able to dazzle kings and princes and rulers uh, of Europe and dazzle the people's minds of today around the world with television shows and documentaries on who he was and how he could do what he did. Uh, anyone who could dazzle the whole world with that kind of knowledge of the future that Nostradamus was able to do, uh, that's someone that I immediately was interested in because that's what I've always been interested in, real extraordinary knowledge and wisdom that's provable, valuable, proved to be very, very valuable. And so when I found out what Nostradamus was really doing, and basically, I am not an authority on this at all, but I got the idea, the general idea of how he was doing it. And it was, a, it was incredible. It was a brilliant. Never, it never occurred to me that uh, to look at the stars and the constellations and the, the planets the way Nostradamus did it. And then to see how accurate he was doing it his way, uh, I thought, wow, man, this is an incredibly interesting subject. How to see the future, how to know where you are today in your life and what's going to happen to you, where you have been all of your life because of your birthday, where you are now because of your birthday and where you're going, whether you like it or not, because of your birthday. Well, then we begin to see in religion, as I said, Christianity, the birth of Jesus, the birth of the Messiah. We're told that there were three wise men that came to, uh, to see the new Messiah. Three wise men were called the Magi's in the Bible. The Bible calls the three wise men who came to Jesus as magis, which we give our word magic from, magis. Well, look at, you will see that the word magi were astrologers. So it's a, it's a hint telling you 
that they saw his star in the sky. What? What are you talking about? A star in the sky? Christians will tell you, oh yeah, the Magi saw the, the star in the sky. They knew about the Messiah. You say, no, wait a minute. Go back and, and I thought you said that astrology, I say to Christians, I thought you said astrology was from the devil. And here we are reading in the Bible that the astrologers, the Magi's, found Jesus, the Messiah, because of a star that they were following. And then when I started thinking about it, well, you know, for thousands of years, the seafaring peoples of the world, the Phoenicians, the Romans, the Greeks, and God knows all the other people, the seafaring peoples of the world that roamed all over the earth on the seas, always guided themselves. They always knew where they were because they knew how to read the stars. Today, even the navies of the world and captains of, of ships have to know how to guide themselves on the high seas by the stars. They navigate by the stars. So there is something of an importance to this idea of understanding the stars, the planets, and where they are at any one time, because the U.S. Navy uh, and the navies of the world have navigated their, their, their trips on the high oceans of the world by the stars. Well, if you're going to navigate yourself by the stars on the ocean, why don't you navigate your life by the stars? And do it the correct way. Do it the way Nostradamus did it. Well, nobody knows how Nostradamus did it. Well, it doesn't, that doesn't mean nobody knows. It means that uh, um, the whole world knows he was able to do something extraordinary. But how he did it was uh, it's been kind of hidden. Why? It's because the church in Europe did not want people to know how Nostradamus was able to do what he did. Now, the popes, of course, would be very interested to know because that would give them a, a, a real leg up to know how things were going to happen in the future. So naturally, uh, the kind of thing Nostradamus knew how to do, they would be very interested to know. But keep it under your, you know, keep it among the clergy. Don't tell the people out there in the world. So... I'm just saying all of this because I think what Nostradamus did was extraordinary. I think the world knows it. And I am, and so when I hear people saying that astrology is a bunch of bull, I think, you know what? Those are, those are empty words. I don't think you know what you're talking about. The only people who say that about astrology are people who know nothing about it. They don't know anything about the history of astrology for the past 7,000 years of human uh, human existence on the earth. They don't know anything about how, why astrological signs, beautiful astrological paintings of signs existed as far back as 25,000 years ago. Uh, people have no idea in the world what the astrological signs mean, where they've come from, and why they are found all over the world. That's something that most people have never even thought about. How come it is every culture on the earth that's ever existed had an astro astrological uh, signs? Everybody, from the from Alaska to to South America to from India to Hindus to Egyptian Babylonians, the Greeks, the Romans, everybody had an ast astrological symbols and signs. Astrology was everywhere on the earth. Period. Why? Well, because today, today our so-called scientists will tell you, oh, it's a bunch of bull. You, oh, really? You're saying the Roman Empire was full of bull because they followed astrology? Are you saying that the, that the most powerful people in the world have, been, have, uh, have gained power and knowledge of the universe? And you're telling us, normal people in the street, there's nothing here. So just go on out and play basketball. There's nothing to see. So I, 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 then I begin to see, as I've said, you've heard me talk about this before. You know, Jesus is the light of the world, and uh, he had 12 helpers. And Judaism has a story about the 12 signs of the, uh, the 12 signs of the zodiac in Judaism are called the 12 brothers of Joseph. 
the 12 tribes of Israel, uh, the 12 uh, great, uh, you know, all the, uh, the instances of the number 12 being used in the Old Testament, in the Jewish Old Testament. Go read in the Bible how many times 12 is used. And Jesus had 12 apostles. And so all of this begs an, an understanding that Nostradamus was telling us something about the universe and about the life that we live. And he knew things that were in people's lives. He knew things that were coming. He knew things that had happened to them in the past. And so I know that that is very important. And that's why I want to do this show, because I feel so uh, so compelled to tell people the reason why we're having so many problems in this country and around the world, the reason people are in trouble uh, with their marriages, with their children, children with their parents, people with their government, uh, governments with the people, the reason there is so much uh, chaos and trouble among humans on the earth in personal, personal uh, and uh, public, there's all kinds of difficulties and problems, especially, as is true, and I know because I've been there, especially for newlyweds, people getting married, having children, and then find out things about their, 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 their wife or their husband, and it breaks up, and they have a terrible emotional breakup in the family. Um all because they didn't realize, you know, the girl they were marrying, you know, what she was like and what she was going to be like 10 years from today. The girl didn't know that our husband, that she, uh, you know, she thought she knew. No, and then she found out it's not what you thought it was. So there's been so much chaos around the world. People making deals that go sour, business uh, decisions that go sour. Why? Because you don't understand how the world works and people are always saying well i wish we there was some kind of a magical wand that we could just understand what's going on and understand the real bottom line on things well there is a way nostradamus found it and he was famous for it so all of this i have said to say this that if you are truly interested in where you are on the earth, what you're doing, uh, spiritually speaking, where you are in time, where, where you've come from, where you are now, and where you're going. If you would like to know something really legitimately important about yourself or your family members or friends or anybody else, then you need to go to someone who knows how to read the stars. Not regular astrology, but the way Nostradamus did it. And I've been promoting this kind of an idea on my other website that was stolen from me. I have had people, uh, uh, you know, belittling me because I talk about astrology, and everybody knows if you're important and intelligent, you don't talk about such silly things as astrology. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not silly that the very powerful people use uh, astrology you don't know anything about. You've never been privy to know anything about it. So if you're really interested, then you might want to contact me and say that you are interested and that you don't mind, uh, you don't mind stepping out and finding out something about yourself and about your life and where you are now and where you're going the way Nostradamus did it. And so that's what I want to basically end this, uh, this discussion about, is that I know, <clears throat> I know people who are able to read your life the way Nostradamus did it. And, uh, and I have watched this person over the years just uh, quite literally blow people away by... by uh, his being able to tell them where they have been, what, what things happened to them and why, uh, what's happening to them right now, and what is going to happen to them in the near future, and then into the far future, all based on the Nostradamus method of reading the stars. <clears throat> so if you are interested, you have to keep in mind first, and I will throw this in, 
You must keep in mind that my website, the original website that I worked hard to put together and that I owned before it was stolen from me by <laughs> who stole everything I own from me. <clears throat> but on my original website, jordanmaxwell.com, which I no longer own for the moment until I can get into court and get my possessions given back to me. But on jordanmaxwell.com was my website. <clears throat> I used to promote the uh, the idea that people should get a reading from my, my friend who is a Nostradamus scholar <clears throat> and who could do this kind of, uh, of magnificent reading of the stars in relation to one's personal life. Uh, and I used to promote him on my website. I even had him on my radio shows. So if you're on my uh, on my on my um, website Jordan Maxwell Show, which is my website today, JordanMaxwellShow.com, <clears throat> because JordanMaxwell.com has been stolen from me. So Jordan Maxwell Show, <clears throat> you can go on there and uh, email me and say that you would like to get a reading from my friend. <clears throat> who does astrological readings the way Nostradamus did it. And I will guarantee you I'm putting my name on it. I'm staking my name and my reputation on the fact that I know something you don't know. And that uh, if you're really interested, you want to step out and do something really interesting for your life, then have this uh, friend of mine look at your chart, look at your birthday, calculate it the way Nostradamus did it, and then he calls you and sit and talk with you for an hour, two hours, whatever it is, and will absolutely astound you so that for the, ne for the rest of your life you will know when you hear people talking about how astrology is, is a bunch of bull that amounts to nothing, it's a pseudoscience, you will know that these people are lying. They're either ignorant or they're, or they're barefaced lying. Because if you, you get a reading from my friend, you will know there is, in fact, something to the stars and how they affect you and, and how they affect your life. Keep in mind this, that uh, the sun, our sun, is affected by the planets around it. Uh, Jupiter affects our sun. Saturn has an effect on our sun. And that, you know these planets are so far away, but they have uh, 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 some sort of an effect on the sun. Uh, the planets also have an effect on each other. <clears throat> and of course, the moon—that's uh, that's over the top. The moon pulls the tides of the oceans of the of, the, of our Earth. The oceans on our Earth, the tides are caused by the moon. So depending where the moon is, the tides are going out. Or if it's behind us, then the tides are coming in. Why? Because the moon affects the waters of the earth. Well, you're 70 to 80 percent water. So does the moon affect you? Because it sure affects the oceans. It affects water, and you're 80 percent water. So does it affect you? Well, we know that there's been a, the idea that there are people we call lunar ticks. That was something that was known a long time ago in history, people who were affected by the moon. We call them lunar ticks. So the sun affects us in profound ways that you don't even realize. Uh, the moon affects us and, and, and affects the woman's body. It affects her. Uh, and, uh, it affects it, uh, the moon and the planets affect the earth. The ancient peoples, unlike the brilliant intellectual giants we have today who say that the planets have no effect on anything, but the ancient peoples knew when to plant, grew, uh, to plant food, to when to uh, harvest. The ancient uh, peoples of the world understood the difference between the new moon, the full moon, and when to plant, when to uh, grow, when to harvest. Uh, when not to do something by the new moon. That's what the ancient kings and rulers of the world knew all of that. And that's what, the, you know, all you got to do is just a cursory study 
of ancient history, and you will see all the kings and important peoples of the world have always guided their nations and their people by the understanding of where the planets are. So uh, all I'm saying in conclusion is this, is that if you would like um, to have a reading from my friend, um, keep in mind that on my old website, the people who stole my website, these who stole my website, have, uh, have put out on, on that website that they control, that they took from me, and they are, they are putting out uh, uh, slender and uh, libelous stuff, making it look like I am saying it. I have nothing to do with jordanmaxwell.com. I don't I have it. I don't own it. I don't have any control over it. The people who are who are going to the people who have stolen everything from me, ripped me off and left me for dead, have stolen my website. And now they want to hurt not only me, but they want to hurt anyone who was my friend or anyone that I am promoting. Anything that I am promoting, they want to destroy. And so on my old website, they're talking about my friend, the astrologer, and, uh, and the stuff they're saying, the slanderous stuff they're saying about him is not true. And I think it's about time that people need to understand nothing on jordanmaxwell.com is from me. It's from scandalous who have stolen my website from me, stolen everything from me, and are now lying and using my name and my website to lie and say things that I never said. So if you want to know something about your life, go to my friend, email me, just email the radio show, or you can email me directly. My email is uh, jordanmaxwellshow.com. Very simple, jordanmaxwellshow.com. It's on my website, and so if you if you email, Jordan, may I interject? Yes. Your email is jordanmaxwellshow at gmail dot com. That's, That's what it is. Jordanmaxwellshow at gmail dot com. Jordanmaxwellshow at gmail dot com. And one more That's thing about- too, Jordan. Um, you said in conclusion, I would like to continue talking. I'd like to get into uh, more detail if that's okay with you. Oh, I think that's a great idea since we're already here and, and, and we don't have a chance to do radio very much. I think it'd be a great idea, but I want to stress that again. Give that email that people who want to get a reading from, uh, from you, uh, give them the email again. What they can do, they could email Jordan directly. That's Jordan Maxwell Show at gmail dot com, or they can just contact the astrology website, which there's a link there that says True Zodiac Astrology. Right. Say it again. Explain it to them where it is on the on the website and what to do with it. It'll be on the right. I think it's under your highly recommended, and you just scroll scroll down, and you'll see a link. It's in bold, purple, true zodiac astrology. That's it. But, George, what I would like to get into, unless you'd like to say something more, I don't mean to interrupt. Let me me say a few more things. Sure. Go on my website to jordanmaxwellshow.com. And uh, there will be a there will be a place where it says contact, so you can hit that and, and send an email. I'll get it. But like I said, it's on the right hand side, right hand column of my uh, my website on every page on the right hand side. Scroll down where it says recommended, or highly recommended, and you will see uh, a, a, a link to True Zodiac. Uh, click on that and uh, and uh, book a, a book a reading. And, and it's like anything else in the world. You get what you pay for. If you want a little bit of knowledge, you pay a little bit. If it's important to get a little bit more knowledge, well, then you pay a little bit more. You get what you pay for in the world we live. However, if, it, if it's really important knowledge, you know, if it's something very important you need to know, well, then you're going to expect to pay a little more then. And if it's extraordinarily important to you, then you might be paying, uh, you're going to be paying more yet. 
So it just depends on how much do you want in this world. You get what you pay for. So uh, uh, if you really want something of real importance, Jordan Maxwell says, go on my website to jordanmaxwellshow.com. Go to the right-hand side and you will see uh, uh, the, the highly uh, recommended uh, sites and links, and you will see, uh, what is it again called? True Zodiac Astrology. That's it. And click on that, book a reading, and then you tell me. You write back and you tell me what, what, uh, what you think. Of my uh, of my recommendation, I stake my name on it. Extraordinary knowledge that you have no idea until you experience what uh, what the Nostradamus method of astrology can do for you. So, if you're smart, the Bible says a word to the wise is sufficient. I remember reading that many years ago. A word to the wise is sufficient, meaning that if you are truly intellectually wise if you're mature and intelligent you don't have to have someone explain it for three hours to you to get the importance of something if you're truly uh, uh, wise perceptive intelligent you don't need someone to explain something for three hours someone important can tell you something one sentence and say it to you and if you're wise you get it if you're not wise, somebody can talk to you for two hours and you still don't get it. So a word, not, not a sentence or a full book, no, a word to the wise is sufficient. So I've been giving you a lot of words, but I'm giving you one last word to the wise, which should be sufficient. If you really are interested in knowing something about yourself and about the world you live in and where you're going, what's happening to you and why, then you might want to do something really extraordinary for yourself. Get our Nostradamus reading from my friend. And uh, that's, uh, like I said, I'm staking my name and my reputation on it. This is a very, very important thing for you to do. And don't, don't bother with reading anything about or me on my old website because that's put on there by my enemies who are trying to hurt me and destroy me so I can't do anything about them stealing everything from me. No, these are my enemies and they're talking about me and they're talking about my friends trying to destroy myself, my name, my work and destroy my friends. I think what does is actually extraordinarily brilliant stuff, but it's not him. It's what Nostradamus gave us and left us, and he is an expert on that subject. So get a reading from Go on my website, right-hand side. You'll see the link for True Astrology. Click on it and get a reading. Okay, let's talk about astrology. Tell us the difference between regular astrology and the Nostradamus method and, and how all of this stuff works. All I know, all I know is that it works. I don't know how it works, but I know it works. It has worked incredible things that I have learned from you. And the readings I have heard you do and given to me are so extraordinary. I want the world to know about it. I want people to know about you and what your work. So uh, for those people who have uh, the feelings about astrology as nonsense, etc. Explain to us the difference between the two and what Nostradamus was able to do, because obviously he did some very important things, because 500 years later he's still important. So give us a rundown on the whole idea. As I have said before, I know that there is a difference between regular astrology and what Nostradamus was able to do, which is similar. It, it's, it's in the same... A category of science uh, Nostradamus but Nostradamus did not do astrology as such he did something whatever it was he did he did it so that even kings and rulers and princes and people and even 500 years later his name is still uh, illustrious his name is still understood to be the great master who could tell the future well there was a way he did it and so I, I wanted you to, you know, kind of 
give a, a rundown on the difference between what we call astrology today and what Nostradamus did. And, uh, you know, just explain this all to me and to, and to those listening. Well, speaking of kings, Jordan, um, in regards to astrology, that's directly connected to why they were crowned at 12 noon. That's when the sun in the day is at its highest. That's right. Mm-hmm. And Leo, Leo in astrology means kingship. And Leo's dignified ruler is the sun. So there's a little background on astrology and kings. Um, but Nostradamus, the way I was taught, uh, Nostradamus was doing what's called a solar chart method. Nostradamus did not use birth times. It's not required. It's nice if you have one, but it's not critical, unlike in conventional astrology. In a conventional astrology, everything's calculated off of the ascendant. You need a birth time for that. See, but in Nostradamus' day, no one had Casio digital watches. Who was born in a hospital? Who could even afford a watch or a clock? Yeah, yeah, right. (laughs) So, what you're doing with Nostradamus did, which is a solar chart method, you put the sun in the first house. And speaking of houses, in astrology... You have the signs, the 12 signs of the zodiac. Then you have the houses. Well, in conventional astrology, there's a multitude of housing systems. Sometimes two houses will intersect one sign. The Nostradamus method, the way I was taught, one sign equals one house. You have totally eliminated that problem. So that's really the basics of the Nostradamus method. It's uh, surprisingly and profoundly simple. But then, yet again, so is the equation E equals MC squared, which has all kinds of implications for gravity and the relative nature of time. But it's a very simple equation. You just need an IQ of Einstein to uh, perceive it, to discover it. So that's what I like to think when I hear the Nostradamus method is simple. Yes, it's profoundly simple. See? So no separate housing system. One house equals one sign, and it's a solar chart method. You put the sun in the first house. Now, the way I was taught, there was one anomaly. And uh, sometimes when you're using the Nostradamus solar chart method, The sun can end up in house number two because of the way the signs are and the timing of the signs. When you use constellations, you don't get that problem. The sun always ends up in the first house. You have a true solar chart method. And we've discussed this on other shows. This is what I believe Nostradamus was doing. He was looking at the constellations. They are different. They are emphatically different than the signs. There is a sign called Scorpio. You can't see that sign with your eyes. That's an artificial division of the ecliptic into 12, 30 degree equal sectors. Okay? But the constellations are the group of stars. There's a group of stars called Scorpio. That you can see with your eyes. And then that band that the planets orbit the sun around, that's the ecliptic. See, now my thinking is, I'm not an archaeologist, but my thinking is the Greeks took the sky out of astrology. That's what happens when you use signs. There's no sky in it. There's no backdrop of fixed stars. See, so they took the ecliptic, which from our vantage point on Earth looks like the sun going around the Earth. It's really the Earth going around the sun. But they took that ecliptic, they divided it into 12, 30 degree equal sectors. They got the number 30 because that's that's how long it takes for the moon to go around the Earth. It's 29.57 some days, okay? But for all intents and purposes, round it up to 30. That's why they divided it into 12, 30 degree equal sectors. And that's incidentally also, too, why 30-degree angles are so meaningful in astrology. But that being said, though, strictly speaking, 
you know, what's called astrology really is ecliptic ology. You're making obs- observations and positioning things relative to the ecliptic. Well, astrology means study of the stars. I personally think Nostradamus was using the fixed stars. I've never been to the archives. I have no way of verifying that. I base that statement off the fact that there's YouTube videos where uh, they're speaking of the lost books of Nostradamus, and he makes reference to the constellation called Aphiuchus, which does not exist when you're using signs. You look at the night sky, you'll see Scorpio, and then you'll see the feet of Aphiuchus, the serpent bearer, and then you will see Sagittarius. So if Nostradamus was making reference to Aphiuchus, he could not have been talking about signs that's my deductive reasoning, because there is no Aphiuchus when you're using the signs. There's Scorpio, and then there's Sagittarius. You look at the night sky, there's Scorpio, Aphiuchus, and then Sagittarius. All right, so what you're saying, if I'm following you this, is that <clears throat> if you've got a reference book on astrology, and it's showing you all the astrological signs and and all the implications of those signs, and they're all beautiful pictures of the different astrological uh, signs, you close the book, because what, what Nostradamus was doing has nothing to do with looking at the signs. What he was doing, if I'm understanding you, is he was actually going out and looking into the sky, not the signs. That's exactly what I think, Jordan. That is my opinion. But that would make sense because the sky is where the story is, not in the pictures. The pretty pictures in the book do not tell you, you know, if, you, if you're a real master, that doesn't tell you anything. They're pretty pictures. They're beautifully painted uh, pictures, but it doesn't tell you anything. But if you really know the heavens, you go out and look up into the sky and whatever you see, that's the real stuff, not the sign. Well, that being said, you know, there was a, there's a story behind the signs. Okay, but because of the procession of the equinoxes, right now when you have the spring equinox, which is the zero degrees of the sign Aries, when you look over your head, you see the constellation of Pisces. There will come a day that zero degrees Aries will occur at the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere. And then what you'll see over your head is the exact opposite of Aries, the constellation of Libra. Which one do you pick? Now, when you see the constellation of Libra over your head, that's applicable to the whole world. But the first day of spring, our spring equinox in the northern hemisphere, would be the, uh, be the fall equinox in the southern hemisphere. So what are you? Northern Hemisphere, you would be considered an Aries, but in the, at the same date, at the same time, in the Southern Hemisphere, you would be considered a Libra. You don't have that problem when you're using constellations. See, and I think that combined with the simplicity of what Nostradamus was doing, now maybe you're getting somewhere. Now, here's my approach to astrology, Jordan. Uh, once again, I first spoke to you on the phone in September of 1996 when you were working at Truth Seeker in San Diego. And then, I, um, then we met in San Diego, February of 1997, and you suggested I get an astrological chart reading. And I was totally befuddled, baffled, and dumbfounded. Why is the brilliant researcher and scholar... Jordan Maxwell talking about something and actually actually highly recommending something that I consider completely bogus. <laughs> but you spent the previous hour explaining why. So in October of 1998, I had my chart read and a lot of it was surprisingly accurate. And uh that's where I started thinking, oh, there's more to this story. I need to look at this. So, and that gets into all the things I discovered you were talking about in the previous hour. Now, look, Jordan, at this point in time, I even tell this because I have the luxury of being able to talk to a lot of people in your audience. 
That's quite a luxury. That gives me the ability to field test a lot of ideas. See? So my, my approach to astrology, and I tell this to the people who have, who've had readings from me, hey, on your left hand, be extremely dubious and skeptical. Be very slow to believe. It's a healthy, mature, adult attitude. And then again, on the right hand, do not prejudice any source of information. Now, thanks to you, you're in premature. These people respect what you say. They take the chance. Okay? And they get the readings. And they enjoy the readings. Now, me, looking at it from a strictly uh, empirical vantage point, I just say to myself, all these people can't be fools. I can't be fooling all of them because there are some people in your audience, Jordan, who are actually very eminent and prominent. Believe it or not. And uh, based on some of the books they've published and who they are, I don't get the idea, you know, this is somebody um, I, I'm fooling, <laughs> you know, with the tomfoolery called astrology. So I just look at it from a scientific point of view, you know, there, there must be something to this. That's what I feel. That's why I promote it, because I know for sure it is. Now, myself, George, I don't evangelize for astrology. I tell the people who call. I don't know you. I can't see your face. We're talking voice to voice, either on Skype or on the phone. I'll read what the symbols say. Um, you make a decision. You use your intellect, wisdom, judgment, common sense, and experience to decide if what these symbols say correspond to your reality perhaps it's just confirmational bias you are inclined to believe what I'm saying based on the symbols because Jordan Maxwell recommended this and I'm just speaking very generally right but I'd have to say uh, my impression now looking at it just from a very detached viewpoint a lot of people seem to think these symbols these symbols, and you know in terms of your work, Jordan, symbolism is extremely important. They seem to think the story these symbols often end up telling is very accurate. I don't know why, but I do think it's interesting. This is another thing, too, once again, from having the luxury of being able to speak to a lot of people in your audience who, you know, uh, oblige your recommendation. Um... This astrology is 95% a symbolic language. But then again, our alphabet, that those are symbols. Look how versatile that is. You take the 26 letters of the Latin alphabet, our Latin alphabet, 26 letters. From that, you get Shakespeare, Encyclopedia yeah. Britannica. Yeah. So imagine now you have all these symbols... A language of uh, well, the symbols of the cosmos, and you have more there. You have twelve. Well, you have thirteen constellations. What that the ecliptic moves through. You've got these various planetary bodies. You have the angles and the aspects they make. And this is another thing too, which you were saying about the backdrop of astrology, because I still look at it. You know, I still look at it from a detached point of view, like somebody just observing it very detached fashion but we have a phrase oh that was an aspect of his character that's an aspect of her character well that's oh, that's true i've heard that well yeah. that's precisely what you have in astrology that shows you how how deeply embedded into culture astrology was and is that's an aspect of his or her character well that's what you call an angle between two planets you call that a planetary aspect there you go yeah well you know in, in the Bible in the New Testament has Jesus saying that in my father's house are many mansions <clears throat> and if I and if it were not true I would have told you so in my father's house are many mansions 
So Christianity has always pictured it as, well, we're going to heaven where we'll live in a great mansion with the Lord Jesus. For the scripture says, I think it's in the book of John, where Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. Well, if you go actually to the Bible reference works, the encyclopedias and Bible dictionaries, you will find that that's not exactly correct. That's a, that's a mistranslation. And the Bible reference books will show you it's a mistranslation. It doesn't say in my father's house are many mansions. That's not what it says exactly. What it actually says, according to all the different uh, <clears throat> Bible reference works, all basically say the same thing. The commentaries, the encyclopedias, biblical encyclopedias, reference works, they all tell you that what is actually being said is that in my father's abode are many houses. Not in my father's house are many mansions. No, in my father's abode. That's the, that's the word which is actually used in the original scripture, translated abode. Not in my father's house. No, in my father's abode are many houses. No, not mansions, houses. So that to correctly understand what Jesus was saying, in my father's house are many mansions. No, in my father's abode are many houses. What is the father's abode? Well, that's where the father lives. What is, where, where does the father live? Well, he doesn't live in Cincinnati. He lives in heaven. Out there in heaven is where the father lives. Well, in my father's abode, where the father God lives, are many houses. Oh, that's different. In the father's abode, the abode is the sky, the, the heavens. And so, therefore, the correct way of, of reading that, John, is in my father's abode, the heavens are many houses. That's the way the Bible references works explain it. So that's true. You go out at night and look into the sky. That's where God lives, out there. And the abode of the heavens are many houses. Yeah, there's about 13 of them we're talking about right now. Many houses. And I think it's interesting that we call the different signs of the zodiac houses. This is the house of Leo, the house of Aquarius, many houses. That's what the Bible is trying to tell you. So uh, in my father's house are many mansions. No, correct is in my father's abode are many houses, houses of the zodiac. Well, in astrology, even with the Nostradamus method, you have 13 constellations, but Scorpio and Ophiuchus I combine in the one house so you have 12 houses and my god Jordan you, you've spoken over and over again we've said it the significance of the number 12 of course it's everywhere in the Bible in the Old Testament and New Well, anyway. Now, another thing, too, Jordan, once again, um, maybe we can just speculate on the air. Um, my conclusion at this time, because once again, this all started by accident. I did a show with you, okay, and then, you know, there was a much more audience response than I expected. So, but anyway, that being said, speculation wise um, from speaking to all these people for over a year right astrology is a symbolic language and my god if anybody understands the significance and importance of symbols I would think that would be Jordan Maxwell that's why I was so uh, so uh, determined that people look at what I'm saying, listen to what I'm saying, that it's not astrology. It's the Nostradamus method of reading the heavens. And that he was famous for 500 years ago. He's still famous. Why? Because he did something that other people could not do. He, he, he made it very simple. 
and was very, very accurate. And so I, all the people that you've given readings to that heard you, heard me talking about you, have written me. I know they've written you and talked with you, but they also write, write me and say, Jordan, we took your advice and we got a reading <clears throat> and we were absolutely amazed. That is not like anything I have ever heard in astrology. I've had other astrological readings. This was nothing like an astrological reading. This was extraordinarily and interesting stuff that was going into my personal life like no astrologer has ever done. And they thanked me profusely, thanking me for, thank you for showing me a and putting me on to him. I would never have known about him if it wasn't for you. So I'm really, that's why I'm so adamant about promoting you because I know everybody has ever gotten a reading from you, has contacted me <clears throat> and said how incredible the reading was and how they thank me all the time, thanking me for putting them in touch with you. So that's what I do. That's who I am. I want to help my fellow man and wake up and find out how this stuff really works. So go on. Well, myself, Jordan, I'm discovering as I go along. I'm discovering as I go along because once again, I try to look at it just from a very detached viewpoint. I don't evangelize for astrology. But this being said, the symbolic nature of it, you can look at Adolf Hitler you can look at his astrological chart, and one thing you will notice based on the symbolism, and I'd be interested to hear your commentary upon this when I finish, Adolf Hitler had a very exact conjunction. It was very... A conjunction means two planets at zero degrees. Now, it might have been zero, zero point... It might have been... 0 0.03 maybe it wasn't exactly 0, 0.00 that would be an exact conjunction but Adolf Hitler conjunction between Venus and Mars was very close to 0 0.00 off the top of my head I don't know exactly what it was but it would be something along the lines of 0 0.04 this is where the symbolism gets interesting and this is how simple astrology can be. Venus represents love. Look into antiquity. My God, venereal disease. It has the word V-E-N in it. Why? Because Venus represented love. <laughs> I think yeah. venereal disease has a connection to love on occasion. Okay, <laughs> there's some of the symbolism of Venus. Mars... The Babylonians, the Sumerians came up with the symbolism. It still stands today. Mars represents the warrior, the athlete, war, aggression, energy. So you look at Adolf Hitler's birth chart and you see a nearly exact conjunction of Venus and Mars. You would look at it symbolically and say, love of war is that yeah that's i always tell the people i read it's symbolic guesswork on my part but decide if that interpretation corresponds to reality now hindsight's 2020 20, okay but it is interesting you can look at adolf hitler's birth chart and see a nearly exact conjunction of Venus and Mars and the symbols would suggest a man who indulges a love of war and unfortunately that symbolism has proven to be true yeah if anybody loved war he did so that's that's the basics of how you do astrology see this is a little different than the newspaper astrology. That's talking about That's sun right. signs. Uh, it's very general. They make predictions. They're probably looking at planetary aspects, right? But going back to symbolism, Jordan, uh, you know, if you see a day where the sun is uh, making a trine to Mars, you might be inclined to think this might be a good day for war. Sun trine Mars. 
That's what I mean about the symbolic nature of astrology. And when yeah. you start going deep into this with people, when they decide to get a reading, they often think that symbolism is applicable to me. I always tell people who call, I say, look, from a strictly scientific point of view, you'd have to say this is symbolic guesswork. You be the judge whether this corresponds, this narrative that the symbols produce. You be the judge based on your own wisdom, common sense, intellect, judgment, and experience. If that symbolic story, you find it in applicable and insightful to your life. So far, a lot of people have. I have no idea. That's one reason I'm interested in your commentary on what you think might be what is going on here that how is it possible these symbols <laughs> actually seem to produce is an accurate narrative of someone's life it gives you a lot of insight into their character um if you if you're dating a lady whose moon conjuncts mars you know that might tell you something about her nature she might not want flowers she might want you to grab her off the street while you go going going on by on your Harley. Yeah, you have to know the the makeup, the 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 spiritual makeup and the nature of each person, and that is according to the the you know the the stars and the impl as I told you before, the moon affects the oceans of the world. Oh, you know, so obviously the moon has some kind of a of a of an effect on the earth. It cert certainly does. It causes the oceans to move one way or the other. Uh, the sun also has a, a profound effect on human beings. It causes things to grow from as far away, uh, you know, from that far away. But things grow and and live because of the sun. We know that uh, energy from the sun gives us energy to live. So the planets around us, uh, you know, and the ancient peoples, as I said, you know, go to the Bible and read how the ancient peoples knew when to plant food, the Native Americans and all the ancient cultures of the world. They, they built and understood the, the implications of the, of the planets and where they were. The, any, you know, go to the Farmer's Almanac. My God, go back 220 years to Farmer's Almanac, and they tell you when to plant. Go get a go get a copy of the Farmer's Almanac that comes out every year. They tell you about uh, well where, where the storms are going to most likely be, and what months are going to be good for this, and what months are good for that, and what the stars are saying. So. It's always been something of very important to understand the heavens. So that's why I just keep drilling on this subject, is that the Nostradamus was able to do so many phenomenal things that he was able to foretell. And I've seen you do it with me in particular and other people that I highly recommend you to. That, um, you know, I, I, I've said this on the air, I'll just say it again. That uh, about a year and a half before it happened, I remember getting uh, 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 talking with you, and you told me that it looks like a year and a half from now there's going to be an incredible banking crisis, and it's going to shake the banking institutions of the world, and it's going to happen in a year and a half from now. And you gave me the month. And the reason why is because of the way Nostradamus looked at things. That's what you were doing. And you said, well, from the looks of it, I'm not God, but from the looks of it, according to the way Nostradamus calculated things, it looks like the banking industry is going to run into a wall. It's going to be a horrible, devastating banking crisis around the world. And it's going to start, and you gave me the month, and a year and a half in the future. And that very month is when the housing bubble broke and all the, the, the stuff about banking started to happen. And I remember calling you and saying, you know what, a year and a half ago you told me this was going to happen. And you said to me, well, I told you this is what Nostradamus was all about. I can, you know, if you understand the heavens and the signs, 
uh, you can see the future. So that's what uh, really caught my attention. And then the more I began, you know, seeing what you were doing and watching what you were telling other people and having it happen in their life, just exactly the way you were saying it, that's what caught my attention. I want people to know that they can find out phenomenally interesting things about themselves, what has happened to them in the past, where they are now, and where they are going, things which are coming in the future. So that's why I, again, put my name and my reputation on this, because I'm very impressed with what I have watched over the years. We've known each other since, what, 96? And I have watched over and over and over. The people who get readings from you contact me and say, my God, if I had only known, I wish I would have known this about myself and about the people I was in business with. I mean, there's a whole story there about people, businessmen who have gotten readings and they told me if I had, you know, I would have made a horrible mistake if I had not talked to <laughs> He explained to me about my, about my chart and about the chart of the people I'm dealing with and helped me immensely not to make a big mistake in my life. So that's why I'm always promoting you and promoting this Nostradamus method, because I know it works. It's not astrology. It's something totally different. And that's why I wanted people to know about you and to get a reading. And I'm always delighted to hear people get back to me and tell me what they think. Well, Jordan, that, um, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> the financial co uh, collapse, what I did, this is the amazing thing about it. And I don't know how it works. It's a symbolic language. And what the symbol suggested, I was using constellations and the dragon's tail. Okay, in astronomy, the dragon's tail is known as the south node of the moon. Very simple, where the moon crosses the ecliptic heading towards the southern hemisphere, south pole. Well, dragon's tail in astrology, the ancients called it a dragon. Not a puppy dog's tail, not a kitty cat's tail. They're trying to tell you this is something powerful. There's that symbolism again. The dragon's tail was in the constellation of Cancer. And I say Cancer rules money because of the connection to the moon. So you see a dragon's tail, which symbolically means stress, and you see it moving in the Cancer. you just putting the symbols together to say stress with money. That's it. And then it, then it happened. That's what's weird about it. Now, yeah. now look what the scientists say. Um, you know, and I look at both sides of the issue. And there's been people who've, who've um, they've done astrology for years, and then they'll accidentally have somebody come in named Mary Smith, and then they accidentally read the chart for Barbara Johnson. But Mary Smith is very happy. It's not even her birth date. And she says, that was the most accurate reading ever. And then the astrologer person is very disturbed because <laughs> it's like, oh, I just read the wrong person, but the other person thought it was extremely accurate. See? So they've come to the conclusion, well, you know, astrology, it's guesswork, it's probabilities, it's generalities, but it's always nice to give people uh, a mythological cosmic narrative to their life. And that's why people are seduced by it. They're seduced by it because, you know, it get, it, it's comforting to know you're part of something living called the universe and your fate is intertwined with it. But scientifically, it's complete BS. I yeah. understand that point of view. See? But what, once again, I go back to your audience, Jordan. I look at it that way. I mean, anybody with two brain cells can come to that conclusion which I just discussed right but there are again some people in your audience who are extremely educated published authors and they listen to the symbolic narrative and they come to the conclusion that you know I don't know this kind of sounds like me and this has got nothing to do with me Jordan this is something pertaining to this thing called astrology well, I know. Yeah, so it's I, a... Um, like I said, I've had so many people tell me that, uh, that it was an extraordinary experience looking at their life through the eyes 
of Nostradamus, the way he would have, if, if he had been alive today, people have said, you know, I felt like I was talking to Nostradamus because if he had been alive today and I had the chance to actually be in his company uh, and hear him talk to me about my life, well, that's what we just did. I just had a reading, and it was a you know it was the most incredible experience I've ever had. And it has nothing to do with astrology as we know it. It's a totally different thing. So at this point, I think I think we both have made the point I want made to the, my audience is that it's very important people get a reading from you, and that's that's the bottom line. That's what I wanted people to know and, and understand. It's very important they get a reading from you, uh, and so you get that on my website. Uh, there's so many more things that I want to talk about, but this, this I felt was something that needs to be said. Um, go on my website, jordanmaxwellshow.com, and on the right-hand side, scroll down, and you'll see the highly recommended uh, uh, links, and you'll see uh, the astrological readings. Uh, click on it, get a reading, and then you tell me. If, if this was something that's just an ordinary astrological reading, you will find out, no, thank you. That's why I put my name and my reputation on this, because I know this is extraordinarily incredible insight that the universe is giving us that most people will never be privy to know because they've heard the church bad-mouthing it and saying there's nothing to astrology. This is not astrology. This is a Nostradamus wisdom and knowledge of the universe and how it affects you. So enough said. A word to the wise is sufficient. I think I think we've said enough. People should just get a reading. <clears throat> and there's so many other things we need now to talk about. So let's move on. May I say one more thing? I know you want sure. to conclude it, but uh, here's another thing you'll see in astrology, how this symbolic language works. And I don't know why. I don't think anybody knows why. I don't even think Nostradamus knew why. Doesn't matter. You make the observation and it appears to work. But what you will often see, symbolically, Pluto in astrology, amongst its other symbolisms, represents big business. And you will notice You'll have a Pluto in your natal chart. The day you were born, Pluto was in a certain position. You know, and that's, that's your natal chart, so everything remains stationary. You're always carrying that with you, but obviously the planets keep orbiting about the sun. They keep moving. They interact with that chart. And you will notice on the days, and there's some caveats to this, but usually on the days where Pluto, uh, Saturn, which you know, you, if anybody understands the symbol of Saturn, it's Jordan Maxwell. But in astrology, Saturn's known as the great malefic, malefic, bad intent, right? So Saturn making a stressful angle to your natal Pluto, you'll often find you'll have a crystallization of business problems. You'll have some glitch or something like that. I don't know why, but that's just what the symbolic narrative will suggest. And that's the basis of this stuff. But once again, you know, I mean, it's kind of like, well, the basis of Shakespeare, kindergartners learned it, C-A-T spells cat. It's very simple. Yeah. And again, the works of Shakespeare are extremely profound. So mm -hmm. I don't purport to be Nostradamus or to be as good as Nostradamus, but there does seem to be something here. And I want no to get, it, and it was important for me to hear what you had to say. Um, why do you promote astrology? Because I was once again, because I've gotten emails. Why is Jordan Maxwell promoting astrology? I don't get it. See, and that's how I felt when you started. Well, yeah, but my answer to that is I am not promoting astrology. I'm promoting Nostradamus's method of astrophilosophy, a whole different kind of story. It has nothing to do with astrology as such. 
It has to do with a famous man who 500 years after he's dead, he is still famous around the world for what he was able to do. That's what I'm promoting, not astrology. I'm promoting the work of a genius, a man called Nostradamus. And if you find out how he did what he did, then for the first time you will see the importance of what Nostradamus knew and how he and how he could tell the future but with it and he's still famous today for doing it and so that's what i am promoting not astrology okay yeah see and that's why that's why this show was even informative for me the first hour was incredible i enjoyed hearing that why this because obviously astrology not astrology conventional astrology the astrology you're talking about that obviously complements astro theology. Absolutely. It certainly does. And there's a hidden message, and I'm famous for saying that. People have been hearing me for years saying that. There's a hidden message. It's a metaphor, a symbolic metaphor, a symbolic message in the New, in the New Testament. So that's why today, if you're reading the New Testament story of Jesus in the Bible, <clears throat> and you're reading it as history, then there's going to be 2,520 different interpretations. That's how many, uh, the last time I read, over 2,500 uh, Christian denominations and sects around the world who call themselves Christian. When the Apostle Paul said, I, I say that we should all speak in agreement. Well, in point of fact, that's not true. Even though the Apostle Paul wrote and the epistles, I would suggest we all speak in agreement. Well, in point of fact, that's not what happens. There's over 2,500 different so-called Christian religions, Christian concepts. Uh, you know, uh, you, you, and then you've got all the different sects and cults from Jehovah's Witnesses, the Mormons, Seventh-day Adventists, Catholic, Protestant, uh, all kinds of, of uh, different, even within the Baptist Church of Southern Baptists and Northern Baptists, and you have all kinds of different uh, div divisions within divisions. So, you know, nobody is speaking uh, in unison. Nobody. Every, and even in, from, even in a particular church, in a particular Baptist church, anybody who's done any kind of research knows what I'm saying, uh, that you can go to one Baptist church and talk to the, talk to the ministers there and ask them certain questions, and then go to another Baptist church on the other side of town and ask them the identical same questions, and they will give you totally different answer, totally different reasons. And the more churches you go to, the more different concepts and ideas will be expressed, which means nobody knows what they're talking about. They're just telling you what they know from the, the best that they know. They don't, they're not authorities. Then you begin to see, well, there's, not a, there's no central authority in Judaism, and there's basically no central authority in, in the Islamic world. There's no central authority in Christianity, period. Why? Because you're reading the scriptures as history, and that's not history. The New Testament is an encoded story. It's a metaphor. And this is why the scripture says that many will look with their eyes but not see and listen with their ears but not hear. And with the heart, they don't get the sense of it. And so if you understand that the story of Jesus in the New Testament is not history, it's a story. This is why the Bible is referred to as the greatest story ever told. It's a story. It's an encoded, hidden story metaphoric story and once you understand the story for the first time you will say oh now I understand what the Bible is saying about Jesus now I get it it was an encoded metaphor and the encoded metaphor and symbolic story that you call the New Testament story of Jesus is actually astrology at the highest point it's very, very profoundly in your face, obvious, once you begin to see how these symbols of words and terms in the New Testament were talking about astrology. That's why Jesus is referred to as God's son. 
the light of the world. He's referred to as the light of the world. Well, of course, the sun is the light of the world. And, uh, and he had 12 helpers. He had 12 followers. Well, of course, the sun has 12 helpers, 12 followers. The 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 months of the year. And so each one of those uh, houses of the zodiac brought the world the sun. So that's why you have in, in, in courts, you have a 12 jurors on the jury system. You have 12 jurors. Why? Because they need to help God's son bring to light the truth. So they, they're looking for the truth and the light. So you have to have 12 jurors, 12 signs of the zodiac. <clears throat> so once you understand that the, the, the story of the New Testament is a metaphor for astrology, then you get into the Nostradamus method of reading the things correctly in the heavens. Now you have a whole new world of knowledge opening up to you that you never even knew existed. And just keep in mind that the people who put down this kind of knowledge – the people who are putting it down and calling it devil worship and demon worship are themselves ignorant, ill-informed, and blind. And that's what the scripture said, the blind who lead the blind and both will fall into the pit. Well, by their fruits, Jesus said, by their fruits, <clears throat> you shall know them. There's a, there's, a, there's a story in the New Testament where a group of people came to Jesus and they had uh, seeds in their hand. And they showed the seeds to Jesus and they asked him, what kind of seeds are these? And Jesus says, uh, go and plant the seeds. And, when the, uh, and, wa and watch what comes up after you planted the seeds. So after you plant the seeds, if a peach tree comes up, that answers your question. They were peach uh, seeds, But if an apple tree grows up, then it was an apple seeds. <clears throat> so you don't need to be a famous scientist to figure it out. Very simple. Plant the thing and watch what comes up. And then he said, <clears throat> this is a relation to the rest of the world. Jesus goes on to say, so by their fruits, you shall know them. Meaning... By the fruitage of the different religions, you can tell what they are. So what is the fruitage of Islam? What is the fruitage for the world of Judaism? What are the fruits that the world has, has gathered from Christianity? What is the fruitage? Well, you don't have to be an astronaut or have a high school education to look around the world and look at the human race. Look at the fruitage of our domination by religion, Christianity, Judaism, Islam. Look at the fruitage. Wars, violence, drive-by killings and shootings, gangs, murder, drug addiction, violence, corruption, filth, degeneracy, pornography, violence, killings, gangs, murder, uh, mafia, corruption everywhere. That's the fruitage of the three major religions. By their fruits, you shall know them. And what is the one thing that all three of the major religions uh, are all championing and saying together is that astrology is all a bunch of bull and don't look at it, don't have anything to do with it. Well, by their fruits, you shall know them. So there's nothing of any intrinsic value, period. In the church anity of today, nothing of any intrinsic or human value in Islam or Judaism or Christianity today, period. By their fruits, you shall know them. Look at the world you live in. That's the fruitage. However, as I said, Nostradamus just blew people away. He was able to tell people what was going to happen in the future. So that's why I want people to know about you and about uh, the whole idea of Nostradamus because it has nothing to do with astrology. And I know that so many people have seen on my old website the condemnation of you, which I didn't do. It's the people who stole my website put it out there to hurt you, to, de to destroy and ruin your name because you were my friend and I was promoting you. So they don't want 
anything I'm doing to go out. So they want to destroy my name, my website, steal from me, take everything I own. And any friend of mine, they want to destroy with them. So that's why if you go on Jordan Maxwell show, just go to Jordan Maxwell show, get a reading from and then you tell me what the real story is. Anyway, I think that we have uh, said enough tonight that uh, we should uh, pick this up and start talking about some other interesting points in relation to this conversation, the next program. Okay, Jordan, sounds good, and uh, thanks for ask, uh, answering my questions. Well, thank you for being with me. I appreciate your work, and I think people who get a reading are really going to be astounded. They always are, always are. And uh, again, like you, and if you want to help me at this particular time in my life when I'm fighting to have stole everything from me, uh, if you want to donate to my uh, website, it helps me immensely. So again, get a reading from and if you wish to uh, help me, you can make a donation. And thank you for listening. Okay, Jordan. Good night. Good night.